Okay, so <clears throat> there's another way that we can have detection of pathogens is through the use of nod-like receptors. And uh, what I, the way that I like to think of these is these are basically soluble, soluble cytoplasmic TLRs. So think of these like TLRs in the cytoplasm. Um, they're a little bit different, but obviously, structurally, they're very, very, very closely related. And they're really good at recognizing bacterial degradation products inside the cytoplasm, so they know that they've been exposed to the pathogen, or they're being exposed to the byproducts, in this case, of the pathogen. They have uh, three structural features that are nice to know. They have the nucleotide binding oligomerization domain, otherwise known as the NOD. This is what they're named after. Um, this oligomerization is going to occur uh, once we have binding of a ligand that's derived from the bacteria. Now, where does the binding of uh, the ligand take place? Well, this generally tends to take place just like with the toll-like receptors and a leucine-rich repeat on the carboxy terminus of it. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then this also on the end terminus here, there's a capsaise-like recruitment domain, otherwise known as CARD, which is going to recruit and phosphorylate, so that should sound a little bit familiar, signaling proteins, which in this context, it does the exact same thing. We get IKK, gets activated, which is going to act to free up NF kappa B, which is a cytokine, well, it's a transcription factor for cytokines and cell adhesion molecules. So uh, that's what that does. The two types of them are NOD1 and NOD2, um, but it doesn't really give a whole lot of specificity, especially in the book, about the differences between NOD1 and NOD2. So for the purposes of this, I like to think of them almost as structurally very similar and functionally very similar. Okay, so this is a picture here showing, uh, I know it's kind of squeezed really tightly. So here we see bac a bacterium here that's being uh, broken down by the phagal lysosome. And then the bacterial degradation products are being released into the cytoplasm. This bacterial degradation uh, products are going to cause a binding and conformational change um, of the bacterial products. Uh, sorry, cause a con binding and conformational change of the nods, which causes them to shape up and to form a homodimer. Uh, this conformational change is also going to activate, in this context, RIPK2, which causes this long cascade of phosphorylation, which, as you can see here, that we have IKK being activated, and NF-kappa-B going to the nucleus, causing transcription of cytokines and cell adhesion molecules. So, yeah, basically the same thing as toll-like receptors, but in the cytoplasm. Okay, so let's review what we just talked about here. So we have the nod-like receptors. Let's talk about their structures that they have. At the C terminus, that's where we have the uh, leucine rich repeat, which is the part of ligand binding, which I hope that picture kind of illustrated that they look very similar to the toll like receptors uh, because they both have very similar uh, functions to do. So at the center of it, we have the uh, oligomerization binding domain or the nucleotide, ugh, nucleotide binding oligomerization domain. Hmm. I'm just going to go ahead and write that out as NOD because that's what they're named after. And then at the end terminus, the end terminus we have a lot of the capsaise, capsaise-like uh, recognition domains, but I'm just going to go ahead and abbreviate it as CARD. Um, in this context, it doesn't really even have much to do with capsases so much as it has to do with other enzymes and things that are going to undergo conformational change. But I'm just going to say that this recruits and then it phosphorylates proteins. To be specific here of, of what exactly we're talking about, well, IKK, which leads to the activation of NF. Kappa B. NF kappa B is a transcription factor for cytokines and cell adhesion molecules. I feel like I've said that a million times today. <laughs> um, the two types of nod like receptors consist of nod 1 and the other one, I feel like this is a Dr. Seuss story, nod 2. Um, but they don't really make a whole lot of distinction in the structural function, structural and functional differences between each of them. But for NOD1, for the most part, we're recognizing the peptidoglycan of gram-negative, which there's not a lot of it anyways, but, and then for NOD2, I'm 
detecting all other types of gram positive and even parts of gram negative, assumably it doesn't, they didn't make the distinction between the two.